Hey everyone, if you've seen my last video using this stove in a camping video, you would see that just in case I didn't find enough wood way out in the middle of the wilderness since the snow was three feet deep, I purchased a bundle of firewood that was way overpriced from a grocery store. And to my surprise, they are selling that to the public for an extreme amount of money and it was not seasoned at all. So what happened was when you have firewood, it's not seasoned, meaning it wasn't properly dried out. The tree is basically still alive. I burned that stuff thinking it was quality. Well, I could see vapor, water coming out of the end of it, which causes a huge buildup of creosote in the chimney pipe. So much so that it started leaking out of the joint of the chimney pipe. That's creosote. It dribbled down the side of the stove and here started smoking so badly it woke me up in my sleep. Well, a lot of people were asking me in one of my videos, the one where I was cleaning my basement, after saying this cannot be used in my catalytic stove at home, I asked the stove company their recommendation because the instructions on here for a catalytic stove says that this thing, after being used, the bypass of the stove must be left open for over a week and the problem with that is if the bypass is open for a week there's no damper on a catalytic stove on the pipe it it has to be engaged to be able to control the fire and that would mean flames would just be able to go right up the chimney pipe and that would eventually destroy the chimney pipe so i called the stove company and they told me if i clean it every year properly don't even bother using one of these it's not worth it. Don't use it in a catalytic stove. Now, typically I wouldn't be using these and I'm probably not going to buy one again for that reason. Usually you would take a real chimney sweeping brush, which is a steel brush, and you ram it up inside back and forth through your chimney pipe. You usually get up on top of your roof and you buy these extensions for it. Usually you need like 20, 40 feet of it. You just up and down through the pipe, cleaning it all out because Despite it dribbling like this, when it's cold, it's hard as a rock and you can scrape it off. Let me open the stove up and show you how bad some of the creosote got. Typically down close to the stove, it doesn't happen because it's so hot, it can't build up. It usually builds up towards the top of your chimney where it's considerably colder. You look down inside here, let me open the damper. Not really any buildup at all. And if we get to some of the other pieces that were towards the top of the pipe you can see they were pretty bad see that that's creosote build up all over you see it's diminishing the diameter of all those holes and if you look inside it that's creosote building up all over the walls you see the diameter slowly closing in basically what you're seeing is soot and stuff stuck to it before the creosote actually hardened but we're hoping that this block will get all that off Typically, like I said, I would just use a brush to get it off, but this is just for an experiment since I have this thing to get rid of. How much will it actually clean the stove? So we're going to fire the stove up, get it really hot, and then we're going to put this log on top of it. I just cut up a whole bunch of this really small kindling that will be really good because this has been seasoning for three years. It's perfectly dry. It's pine. It's going to burn really hot. Then we're going to throw these bigger pieces in to get the fire roaring. Then we'll throw this thing in that's supposed to burn for 90 minutes. When that is all completely done, we will check the pipes again and see if it actually cleaned the thing up. I know that this log splitter, for this reason, is not faster. This log splitter works really good for big logs because with an axe it can be kind of back-breaking. Sometimes you got to use a sledgehammer and wedges, but... This thing works really good. Now, this stuff here is so dry and small, I could have easily used my axe. But, honestly, this thing's fun to use. Alrighty, so we got this thing set up now. It's got a really, really tall pipe. Time to light it up. So I stuffed the firebox with a whole bunch of cardboard, which will be enough to get this stuff burning since this stuff has been seasoning for three years. It's not going to take a lot to get this thing blazing. As soon as this kindling has 
got really hot and has made some space. I'll throw some bigger logs in. Once it gets really hot, I will throw the log in. This is a very small stove, so it should be up to its operating temperatures within like five, 10 minutes. It will smoke a whole bunch until the fire starts getting hot and burning clean. All right, everyone, it's been going for about six minutes and it really caught good. This thing is now fully heated. Even that small kindling, that's gonna last a while. So maybe we'll just throw the log in there in like 10 more minutes. We don't even have to wait as long as I thought. And now that it's nice and hot, it's now burning perfectly clean. Zero smoke at all. All you can see is the wavy air because it is just so hot coming out of there. Zero smoke. We're now burning very clean. All right, I'm not sure if any of you are interested in reading this box. If not, like, fast forward a minute or two. I'm going to make sure it all focuses in in case anyone wants to read the packaging here. Looks like the same thing on that side. Here's the instructions. That's not the instructions. This is the instructions. All right, that's about it. Let's take it out. If you notice in the packaging's a little weird, it just got briefly left in the rain, but the product didn't get wet. So here's what we got inside. Another little booklet too. You saw that there it says we have to put it in there with the wrapper on just open one end of it I guess that'll help it catch we don't need to read the rest of this we know what we're doing all right everyone so here's what the product actually looks like you see inside there what's it smell like it smells like brand new lumber now it said in the instructions to pull the seam just to create a little airflow around it. And now we're gonna go ahead and poke that around a little bit and we're gonna throw it in. Now it says that we should burn for like 90 minutes. Here we go. I'll leave you guys on a time lapse so you can see how it's doing. If anything exciting happens, I will show you. All right, everyone. So this has been burning for about three hours. The fireplace sweeping log has long stopped burning and disintegrated. There's just a couple other logs that I've been feeding it to help it burn. It's still going on in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and shut the door on this. Let it completely burn itself out. And as soon as it gets cold in a couple more hours, we will take apart the chimney and we will see if it cleaned out what I showed you earlier. 
All right, like a minute later, I touched the pipes, and because it's not burning much, I was able to just take them apart without potholders or anything. They weren't even that hot, except this last one. I couldn't hold it for more than a few seconds. So we just disconnected it, and these, like a minute later, I can touch them now. Take a look inside. Still going a little bit, but because you could see it's sleeting out right now and I didn't want this thing to get rusty by being in it so I pulled it over right next to the garage under the overhang where it can burn out so let's take a look at it this is the pipe up top it looks like it definitely helped clean those holes and just like it said in the instructions look at the inside it compromised the creosote so it all just bangs off it did work after all that log. Look at that. You bang it and all the creosote has now kind of hardened fl and is flaking off. So basically that makes it burn really hot. So it just, eventually it should all fall off. Now it's said to see full effects of the log. It may take up to two weeks of burning. This is a camping stove and we're only going to be using it for about one day at a time during camps. So it may take a while to see results, but it appears the log, parts of it anyways, are still going to remain inside these pipes. So it should get better. But bang it around. Look at that, even more of it's falling off. Just those vibrations, even more of it's falling off. So... Is it worth using it in a camping stove? I would say no. You'd be better off with a big actual chimney cleaning brush. Now, let's look down closer to where the fire was. Which one of these? This is the one I think that was right above. No, it's not it. All right, let's see if it did anything with the others. Kinda, it kind of worked. Well, I just wanted to do this little experiment. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.